Hey, fellow network engineers and automation enthusiasts. My name is Tim Fiola. I'm a developer advocate here at Network to Code. And this is the first in a series of videos today on GraphQL and Nautobot's Graph IQL interface. So in short, GraphQL is a query language that allows you to efficiently query the data in Nautobot and save you loads of time and effort when programmatically accessing data from Nautobot. So let's go ahead and get started. I very much encourage everyone to follow along at Nautobot's public sandbox website at demo.nautobot.com. Okay, once you reach the website, go ahead and log in. The username is demo and the password is, if I can type, not, there we go. The username is demo and the password is Nautobot. All right, let's go ahead and log in. Awesome. Okay, here we go. So once you are logged in as demo, go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom of the web page on the lower right side in this selection area down here, click on GraphQL. This will take you to Nautobot's Graph IQL interface. So GraphQL is the query language you're going to use. Graph IQL is a web interface used to practice GraphQL queries against the data in Nautobot. The Graph IQL environment has similar use cases to say the Arista Command API Explorer or the Cisco NX API Sandbox. Nautobot is an open source project that can serve as a source of truth for your network. So because of that, getting data programmatically and efficiently from Nautobot is very helpful. A follow-on video is gonna demonstrate how to leverage these queries we're about to do with Postman and Python for a more, more programmatic application. But first today we'll be building and practicing Graph IQL, GraphQL queries in the Graph IQL uh, tool. All right. If you see this uh, informational block of comments right here in the Graph IQL, go ahead and delete it. And let's go ahead and take a look at the layout of Graph IQL. On the left hand side is the query area where we build our query. The right hand side over here is the results where the returned data comes back to us. And over here on the far right, if you look at this docs button in the top right side, that will open up a documentation explorer. So you can access this like we just did, pressing the docs button, or there's another way to do it with some more context, which is what we're gonna use in our queries here. So for now, I will go ahead and close this part of it, but we'll be back to it, okay? Right on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get on to building our first query in the Graph IQL interface. So we'll go ahead and type in query and it, uh, Graph IQL is a great feature that auto completes valid uh, completions for text you start typing. So we'll go ahead and query and we're gonna query right now for devices. And again, we started typing DE and a list of valid auto completions popped up. We'll go ahead and select devices tab um, so you see this warning sign here that comes up in the top of it. It says, what it's saying is, hey, you're saying devices, but you need to specify exactly what you want from devices, what attributes or fields you want to query for. So to open up what we want to query for, we add some more braces um, <clears throat> and that goes away. So what you notice right here, what popped up and stayed there was a tool tip for device, query, devices, and device type. So we can use this to figure out what to query for within the devices stanza. So let's go ahead and look at that right now. So if you click on the device type link, that opens up the documentation explorer here on the right. All right, so this is cool because it tells us, hey, within the devices field, here are the different fields you can query for to return data on. There's all kinds of good stuff here. What we're interested in for this initial query is the name of each device. 
in, not, in uh, the not a bot inventory. So we see name is valid right here. So we'll go ahead and type in name. And as we start to type it, it autocompletes, letting us know we're on the right track with it. So let's go ahead and do that and go ahead and hit this play button up here, this triangle on its side. Go ahead and hit that and that will execute the query. Your data, you, the exact data you see may vary depending on the state of the database. But what's important to note is there's a, a data key and a devices key within that. And then a list denoted by this open bracket up here of all the names of all the devices. And this goes on quite extensively. I won't go down to the bottom, but uh, it goes on quite extensively, giving you the name of every device within the Nautabot inventory. Super awesome. Why is this awesome? Because we told it exactly what we wanted and we returned, the data that got returned was only what we asked for and nothing more. We don't have to filter out any other data from this, these returned results. Cool. So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> build on this query a bit. So let's say we're also interested in devices by name and also the name of the site where each device lives. And since we still have the device type explorer open on the right hand side here, uh, I'll just go ahead and point out site is a valid uh, query field within the device's stanza. So let's go ahead and hit site. And again, it's it's telling, giving us a red indication that we need to specify what exactly we want returned for the site. And let's go ahead and explore that a bit here. On the right-hand side within the device type, let's go ahead and click on site. And then go ahead and click on the site type. Within the site type, we see all the fields we can query for for the site. Now, we happen to only be interested in the name of the site, which is right here. So let's go ahead and type in site name, and it auto-completes for us. Totally awesome. All right, let's go ahead and do that and run the query again. There we go. Bam. Cool. So here we go. In addition to the, the name of each device up here, we also see the site name that where that device resides. So devices returns a list. And then if we look at the first item in the list, we have the name of the device and the site name where that device resides. Cool. Let's go ahead and narrow the, narrow the scope a bit. Let's say we're only interested in the devices, excuse me, in the, excuse me, in the devices in a specific site. So what we're going to do here is add what we call a query parameter. So as we hover over the device, um, the devices stanza, uh, before we went right to device type, but this time let's go to devices. What this devices will tell us is what query parameters we can add to narrow the scope of return data, to better qualify it, in other words. And what we'll see here is, if I can find it, here we go, the site. So that means within the devices, not device type, but devices, we can use a query parameter of site. And as we start to type it, we see it autocompletes, which is a great sign. And let's say we're interested in the devices in the AMS site only. OK, so since we're, in, since we're explicitly now qualifying, we only want the devices in the AMS site, let's go ahead and delete the site name query, since that's redundant at this point. All right, let's go ahead and execute this query. Bam. There we go. We now have a list of names of devices in, in the AMS site. Again, notice we're not getting any back any extraneous data, only the data we've asked for. OK, cool. Let's go ahead and build a more sophisticated query. 
uh, from this. In addition to the, <clears throat> excuse me, device and the device name, let's say we want a lot more information. So we can do that if we hover over the device's uh, word. We can go to the device type to find all the things within devices we can query for. So we can query for interfaces, for instance. Interfaces is down here. So let's add that to our query, interfaces. And let's go ahead and explore the, uh, <clears throat> this device explorer, the, the explorer a bit more as we do this. Interfaces, what can we query for within the interfaces stanza? Um, <clears throat> if we go to the interface type, we see that we can query for, let's say we're interested in the interface name. Is that something we can look for here? Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and type in name, okay? And also, let's get some more information. Let's say the IP address. Can we get the IP address information? Yes, we can. So we'll go ahead and type in IP address and that uh, IP address is, and it autocompletes for us, which is awesome. What information can we return on IP addresses? Well, let's go ahead and click on the IP address type. And well, we can, we're interested in the IP address and there's an address field available. So let's go ahead and hit address, okay? And let's go ahead and query and see what comes back. Awesome, let's go ahead and take a closer look at what exactly came back, okay? So we have, again, we have our list of devices. Uh, the list has started where this open bracket starts. And we have a bunch of uh, items in the list. Let's go ahead and look at the first item in the list. Uh, the device name is AMS Edge 01. The, um, now let's look at the list of interfaces uh, that got returned. Again, another open bracket here indicating another list uh, for the interface's value. Let's go ahead and look at the first uh, interface here. Uh, we have the name of Ethernet 1.1, and the IP address on that interface is 10.11.192.0. Totally awesome. We have so much information here, and only the information we want. There's no extraneous information here. This query alone, if you were to take REST, API, REST APIs and try to construct a very similar data structure, you would have to make 12 separate REST API calls and do a lot of data filtering in order to build an equivalent or uh, almost equivalent data structure. So GraphQL is saving you so much time because it's letting you uh, retrieve data from a bunch of different domains and it's only returning the data you ask for. Awesome, okay. Let's go ahead and include a little bit more additional data here for our final exercise. So let's say we're still interested in interfaces and what we can do here. So let's go ahead and uh, look for the, get back to the interfaces, uh, the interface type. And there's two ways we can do it. One, we can hover over interfaces here, or we can just, since we are just at interface type, we can do backwards arrow up here and go to the interface type on the documentation explorer. What else can we get in uh, in the interfaces? That what else can we query for? Let's go ahead and take a look here, because what I really want to know here is, let's say the connected interface is interested to me. Okay, well here's connected interface right here. So let's go ahead and specify. Hey, we want the connected interface. Whoa, if I can type connected interface, and again it's going to it's going to bonk us and say, hey, we need more information. What information do you want for the connected interface? Uh, the interface, the interface, excuse me, the, the connected interface information we want is we want the connected device and we want the device name. Okay. And let's say we also want the name of the connected interface. So making sure you exit the device stanza. And it's, it's helpful again to use indentation to help guide you. And let's just say we want the connected interface name. If I can type name, wow. Okay, name. So this gives us the connected interface, the connected device, the 
connected interface name. And let's just say we want the, let's say we want the IP address of the connected interface. Whoops, we just copy what we have up, up, up top, address. Okay, we have a lot of cool information here uh, that we can access now in one query. Let's see what comes back. Right on. Okay, so we have a bunch of the usual suspects that we've seen before. Let's look uh, for the dev first device returned. Let's look at the list of interfaces and look at the first item in the list and examine everything in this, excuse me, in this item. We have the familiar stuff. Ethernet 1.1 is the name of the, the interface with an IP address of 10.11.182.0. Awesome. The connected interface resides on AMS Edge 02 and is also named Ethernet 1.1. And the IP address of that connected interface is 10.11.192.1 slash 32. Awesome. Okay, again, emphasizing it, we're only getting back the data we requested and nothing more. GraphQL is a great way to efficiently retrieve data from Nautobot without having to do a bunch of additional filtering and reducing or bringing the number of queries down to one versus in this case, it would probably be 12 or more. All right. One other thing I want to mention before I go is uh, these buttons up here. Uh, there's the history button we can take a look at if we hit that. We have a history on the left-hand side here of all the queries we've done um, to date in this session. So we can easily go back and find you know, a given query, okay? Um, this Printify button, let's go ahead and close that. This Printify button, uh, this helps with our indentation. Let's say we were kind of out of whack with our indentation. You know, GraphQL is paying attention to the braces, not the indentation. And let's say we just got out of whack with our indentation. If we hit Printify, it fixes it for us. And that is super helpful when you're trying to make sure that uh, to understand what stanza you're in. Um, so for instance, we know that connected interface, we have device and name, and we have interface name and IP address within the connected interface stanza. And within the, inter uh, within the interface of stanza, we have name and IP address in addition to the connected interface. Prettify can make sure your indentations are correct to make it easier for you to read your own queries because it's easier visually for you to understand the spacing, the indentation that it is for you to probably pick up on the, the different uh, open and closed braces that GraphQL pays attention to. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time today. Uh, be sure to stay tuned in the series for follow-on videos that will explore, again, how to programmatically leverage these queries we've constructed here, how to leverage them programmatically in Postman and then Python. Thanks and have a great day.